Hello and welcome. So this time I want to give you a short update on my smart thermostat project. To be honest, things are not going as well as I expected, but hey, what's a project without technical challenges, right? So if you're interested, just stay with me. Okay, so this is the current state of the smart thermostat. Yeah, it's still in pieces and I have my reasons for it. So first of all, there are a few main components. The display, the board and this control panel I made. So basically the idea is that uh, on that control panel I have the sensor and I have a few buttons. So these are just normal tactile punch buttons and um, by using the one button library my idea was that basically with three buttons I can squeeze in a lot of extra functionality because the one button library supports functions like double tap on the button uh, holding the button down and stuff like that and actually it does it in a quite elegant way so it looked like a good candidate Unfortunately though, there's a problem with this control panel. So I created it, designed it and programmed it, I mean writing the Arduino code, using an ESP8266 and it was working fine. All the three buttons were working and uh, also the temperature sensor. Now the same control panel is attached to this ESP32 board and while the temperature sensor is still working, the buttons are not. So right now nothing is happening, although some text should appear on the LCD. Obviously it's not the wiring and not the control panel itself, nor the Arduino code. So it must be something related to the ASP32. So I'm still investigating it. Okay, this is pretty much the main blocker problem right now, and I'm working on it. However, the good news is that, in general, the concept seems to be working. So, the Arduino code is pretty much a mess right now, but it has Wi-Fi, it has a sensor working, it has uh, basically everything that is needed. It even has the code for the relay, which is just not connected right now, because this thing is heavy and uh, whenever I'm moving this around it's just yeah extra weight okay so what next um, I will need to work a bit on the wiring because uh, it's not the best solution I mean uh, I did it this way to keep the overall height of the thermostat and the overall size in general the smaller is, that is possible but uh, yeah, it has its drawbacks. I mean, this wiring is pretty much fragile and inconvenient. So I'm thinking about uh, turning this something, turning this into something like a shield. Or so, let me show you. So I can disorder these and have a thin little board, and then. Uh, add uh, male connectors on the other side so it will be basically turned into pretty much a shield like this and my idea is that uh, I should just create a PCB which would hold the two shields between each other effectively um, removing the need for this wiring also I could add the same buttons and the sensor and the on that uh, PCB However, it would mean that this whole thing basically gets doubled in uh, size, however, it gets a bit thinner. Still, I can't get uh, much thinner than the size of the relay. But um, it's an interesting idea I'm playing with right now. Also, uh, in the future, I would like to concentrate on uh, 
let's say developing my own skills for for uh, creating boards on my own I my I mean uh, PCBs because uh, let's say yeah this wiring is far from elegant I mean I understand this is a prototype and whatnot but still it's ugly also um, using these proto boards can be tedious to use sometime it will be just it should be just much easier to to create my own PCBs so yeah that's a plan all in all it seems like uh, this uh, whole project will take much more time than I expected because uh, yeah it's electronic part is one thing I also need to work on the actual backend software uh, I don't really see any technical problems with it thanks to being a backend developer specializing in networking, cloud, databases and whatnot. But uh, yeah, this part is much more challenging and uh, actually takes more time than I expected. So I decided to keep uh, doing these uh, updates videos uh, for the project instead of just, uh, let's say, uh, not saying anything about the project for a month or something like that. So in the future, update videos will be something like a vlog style video like this. And it will be, these will be marked as actual update videos while the, the, the videos I promised for this project in the first part will be marked as part 2, part 3 and part 4. So if you're not really interested in uh, the intermediate steps and status updates and whatnot yeah then just skip these update videos no harm done I understand no not much not many people like vlog style videos but hey uh, I decided that uh, uh, giving a status update from time to time um, could benefit some people who are interested um, where I am uh, with the project at the given moment Okay, uh, one more thing I need to mention is that uh, I will definitely create a video on this uh, BME 280 sensor because this is pretty much, I think, the best temperature sensor I've seen. I mean, uh, it has huge ranges, it has pretty much the price of uh, DHT22 but uh, it also gives you barometric pressure and um, yeah uh, my my experience is that it it, it is fast i mean uh, in, in usually for these sensors uh, there's a given time limit which means that uh, within that time limit you don't really have a point querying as a sensor because it will return the same data I mean it refreshes periodically but this one seems to refresh pretty much every time you query it and it's fast I mean just let me show you okay so you can see how fast it is uh, it, uh, it uh, does the updating thing and uh, point is it has a hundred millisecond delay built in so even with that delay the refreshing of the data is insanely fast <clears throat> Again, uh, I had a, a temperature sensor comparison in the past and uh, I will definitely create a new one soon and I will definitely add this sensor uh, to the comparison. Probably also uh, one or two others because uh, it was requested and uh, I'm also pretty much interested in uh, such a comparison myself as well. So I will do those benchmarks again. I will. Uh, once again uh, inject a lot of data into Elasticsearch then uh, create a diagram out of it via Kibana and stuff like that pretty much like I did with the old video okay time to wrap this up so this is where I'm standing right now uh, also I have an enclosure for this in the works but as I said I might go with um, separate PCB which I uh, which means that I've scrapped that design and I will just uh, 
create a new one. Also, if the buttons don't work out for some reason, I mean, it turns out that uh, the library is not compatible or stuff like that, uh, I will try to use uh, something like a rotary encoder plus a button, pretty much like the, the control button of the Enders 3, which is like turning and then pushing. So it's also pretty neat for navigating in the menus. Anyway, I'm closing this video right now. Thanks for, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.